Praise the Lord and grace and peace to you in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is a joy to greet you on this Sunday, January the 7th, 2024, the first Sunday of the new year as we celebrate today the baptism of our Lord. We welcome you to this service of worship emanating from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV, serve as pastor. So as we welcome each and every one of you gathered here in the sanctuary, and as we say good morning and welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online, let us stand and join the choir in singing our opening song, Welcome Into This Place. You desire to abide in the praises, so we lift and we lift as we offer. Seek thy good. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You may be seated. It is prayer time and the altar is open. And those of you who desire to bring your joy, sorrows, and concerns to God in prayer are invited to do so. As you come to this moment of prayer, we want to keep in prayer our very own brother Charles Armstrong, who's hospitalized, and we pray uh, for his speedy recovery. We also pray for Sister Yolanda Murray and 
uh, on the passing of the Reverend James Edward Murray Jr., former pastor of Greater Avery. We pray for the congregations that he served. Also for the uh, family of the Reverend Stephen Jackson, who passed and pastored in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, so much has happened in this very first week of the new year. And every Sunday at the end of service, I tell you to look at that Adams board and to know 988. Well, I know one who committed suicide just this week. So that is still a very serious issue. And there are people who are hurting on uh, this very first week of the new year. So we pray for all of these uh, situations, knowing that God is able and that God will keep every situation in the hollow of his hand. Let us now go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we pause once again to give you thanks. To thank you for last night's slumber and for this morning's rising. We thank you, Lord, that you have watched over us and that you've kept us on the hilltop and in the valley, in the good times and in the bad times. You've never left us, nor have you forsaken us. So for those who are ill and reaching out to touch the hem of your garment, may you feel the power leave you, Lord Jesus, and that power radiate through their bodies and they may be made whole once again. We pray for their doctors and their nurses, for the medical staff that treat them, imbue them with the wisdom and knowledge they need to serve those conditions. But ultimately, Lord, we commend them to Jesus, the great physician, the one who's the author and the finisher of our faith. For those that have served and you've called to heavenly reward, we hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. We pray, God, that you would uplift those families that are bereaved and let them know, God, that Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal, that you sent your son Jesus to suffer, die, and to rise again so that we might not know death, but know everlasting life. Lord, we thank you that in 1830, six faithful people thought it not robbery to start a new work here in Cleveland, Ohio. And as the calendar turned to 2024, we now enter year 194, God, as a living witness of your goodness, of your grace, of your mercy. So thank you, Lord, for having allowed us to see this first Sunday of 2024 and remind us unto whom much is given, much is required, that we, as we talked about last week, are still here for a purpose. So help us, Lord, to be salt and light, to be agents of healing, wholeness, and restoration, to be beacons of light in a world that is dark, to be salt in a world that is tasteless, and to bring hope where there is bewilderment. We pray for each and every family that has ever walked through this door, any person that has had any tangential connection to St. John, we pray a plenary blessing upon them, God. We don't know who we touch, we don't know who we reach, but you know God. And we thank you for strategically placing us in a position where we can preach your gospel, administer your ministry, and celebrate your sacraments for the betterment of your people. And Lord, there are many who wish they could be in these sanctuary walls today, but for various reasons, they cannot. Let them know that on the corner of East 40th and Central Avenue, somebody is praying for them. Somebody has them on their mind. And because we touch and agree that you are good, because we touch and agree that you are a healer, because we touch and agree that you are a sustainer, because we touch and agree that you are a reconciler, Lord, we claim victory in people's lives right here and right now. So we pray that you would accept this sacrifice of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. That you would bless our choir as they minister to us in song. That you would bless our preacher as he breaks the bread of life. That you would bless us as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Breaking the bread and lifting the cup in remembrance that while we were yet sinners, you died for us. And that on the other side of this worship service, Lord, we won't just leave saying we went to church. But we'll leave with joy saying that once again, 
we've experienced the living Christ. It is in his name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Lord, prepare me. lesson taken from Acts chapter 19 verses 1 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through the upper country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. And he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, no. We have never heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, Into what then were you baptized? They said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. There were about twelve of them in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God from all that dwell below the skies. spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Savior saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
Amen. You may be seated. It is my joy, honor, and privilege to welcome to St. John one who is not a stranger among us, but a preacher in the person of the Reverend Dr. Eric L. Brown. Dr. Brown has served for many decades here in the 3rd Episcopal District in a number of capacities and is one of my close personal friends and my brother in masonry and my brother in Christ. So after the uh, choir blesses us with a selection, the next voice you hear will be that of my friend, my brother, one who has been a friend to St. John and a friend to many, the Reverend Dr. Eric L. Brown. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Let's give him a St. John welcome. Amen.
the church say amen. amen. The church say amen again. Amen. Now say amen like you mean it. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible says we should rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, how happy, how blessed, how privileged I am to be here with the Mother Church on this first Sunday in the year of 2024, to be again in the presence of my great friend, the Reverend Henry F. Curtis IV, whom I met in Seoul, South Korea in 2004 at the World Methodist uh, Conference. And for the last 20 years, we have been fast friends. So I thank him for the invitation to come today on this first Sunday to share a word from the Lord with you. We greet you in the joy of the Lord for Nehemiah chapter 8, verse number 10 reminds us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. This morning for a few moments, because I realize you don't have to be, to be everlasting to be eternal. And I think the Cleveland Clowns play today, don't they? <laughs> My Steelers did it yesterday, so. Yeah, so we'll see what the Clowns do today. And don't forget about those cowgirls. You know, we'll see what they do. If you don't have a sense of humor, you ain't got no sense at all. Amen. I want to read to you this morning from the gospel according to Luke chapter number 14, verses 18 through 21. For those three verses form the basis of our message today. We also want to celebrate the presence of our conference lay president, Sister Stephanie Bruce. Put your hands together and praise God for her and all the leadership that she gives in this conference. Luke chapter number 14, verses 18 through 21. I'll be reading from my favorite translation of the Bible, uh, Eugene Peterson's remix translation. It may read a little differently, but the meaning is ultimately the same. Luke chapter number 14, verses 18 through 21. It says, they all began to beg off one after another making excuses. The first said, I have I bought pro a piece of property and need to look it over, send my regrets. Another said, I just bought five teams of oxen and I really need to check them out, send my regrets. And yet another said, I just got married and need to get home to my wife. The servant went back and told the master what had happened. He was outraged and told the servant, quickly get out into the city streets and alleys, collect all who look like they need a square meal, all the misfits and homeless and wretched you can lay your hands on and bring them here. I want to talk to us this morning on this first Sunday morning in the year 2024 from these five words. They are get rid of your excuses. Turn your neighbor, look him square in the eye and say, neighbor, neighbor. oh neighbor, oh, get rid of your excuses. All of us under the sound of my voice are guilty of making excuses. You don't have to say amen because I know I'm right about it. I looked outside this morning and I saw that there were snow flurries falling and I said to myself, I ought to call Pastor Curtis and tell him that I can't make it to Big John this morning because it's cold and snowing outside. I stopped by this morning to remind you and remind myself that excuses are tools of nothingness. Nothing good comes from making excuses. Excuses merely delay the inevitable. There are no excuses for death and taxes. The parable found before us this morning in Luke 14 highlights making excuses. The three who sent their regrets had probably told themselves these excuses so many times they finally deemed them to be valid reasons. No. Likewise, my brothers and sisters, if we keep telling ourselves what we cannot do, what we cannot become, our own defeated attitude becomes our marching orders. No. People can tell themselves a lie so much that they begin to believe that lie. But a lie is a lie. And an excuse is always an excuse. The invitation from God is a spiritual invitation. Excuses are usually based on the material or the physical. There is nothing wrong with buying land, nothing wrong with working, nothing wrong with getting married, but 
It's wrong to place those things above the invitation and the call from God to service. The excuses of the people in Jesus' parable were foolish in light of such a gracious invitation. Yet, they are no more foolish than the excuses that we give on January 7, 2024. So this morning, I want to lift up three of the common excuses all of us have or will use at some point in our lives. Initially, I would submit to you the all-time favorite is, I am too busy. Turn to your neighbor, look them square in the eye and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, are you too busy? In Luke 14, the three men who made their excuses were preoccupied. They were busy with land, they were busy with oxen, they were busy with marriage, which is the most important in the long run, land, John Deere tractors, romantic love, or eternal salvation. Let's put it in this way. Suppose you owned two businesses and one was worth $1,000 and the other was worth $1 million. It would be reasonable for you to give all of your time to the one to the one thousand dollar business and none of your time to the million dollar business. And when you compare heaven and the world, this world is the one thousand dollar business. It's not right for you to spend all of your time with the world and be too busy to give things attention to things of the spirit. Yes, sir. Get rid of your excuses this morning. Yes. Secondly, I would submit to you. That I, we, we say, we use the other excuse that I don't understand enough. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you understand? The master who gave this banquet did not expect those who were invited to know everything about the banquet. He did not expect them to understand all about the food that was being served or about the entertainment. However, he did expect them to come to the banquet. Pascal, the French philosopher and mathematician, pointed out the supreme function of reason is to show humans that some things are beyond human comprehension. Mm -hmm. With all of our knowledge, there are still some things that are even, even the most brilliant person will never understand. God does not expect anyone to understand all the mysteries of his kingdom. However, he does expect us to come to Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord and Savior. If people understand enough to realize that sin has separated them from God and God sent his only son, Jesus, to suffer, bleed, and die on Calvary's cross, that you and I might have life eternally. Amen. Other excuses that people use is that there are too many denominations or people in church don't suit me. I'm a pretty good person. God will probably accept me as I am. I stop by to remind you that excuses are tools of nothingness. And only what you do for Christ will last. Amen. So as we seek to understand that we can never be too busy to do the Lord's work. We, secondly, I would submit that we, can never, we may never understand the mysteries of God. We must accept them by faith. But the final thing that I want to lift up this morning for your consideration is the all-time favorite of my excuse, of excuses. It says that I am not ready. Turn your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor. Are you ready? Are you ready? Turn your other neighbor, look them square in the eye and say, neighbor. Oh neighbor. Oh, neighbor. Are, you are you ready? It is apparent that those who refuse the master's invitation to the banquet took that invitation too lightly. However, the master considered their response very important. Luke 14, 24 indicates that those who rejected the invitation would have another opportunity to come to the banquet. To say no to Jesus is a dangerous thing. Ah. It's dangerous because God's impending wrath hangs over the lost. Mm -hmm. It's dangerous because one's heart may be hardened each time that a person says no. It's dangerous because Jesus easy, it becomes easier next time to say no. But Hebrews 3, 7 and 8 reminds us that today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. To say no to Jesus is, a day, is dangerous because of accidents and death. How far away is death? It could be just a breath away, one heartbeat away, one malignant cell away. One car wreck away. But Proverbs 27 reminds us to do not boast about tomorrow. But you don't know what a day may bring forth. 
So I stopped by this morning to tell you that as we begin this new year, let's leave all of our excuses back in 2023. Leave your excuses, your disappointments, your frustrations, leave it all back in 2023. Because I stopped by to remind you that if you get rid of your excuses, that's when God will begin to bless your life. Today is the day of salvation. For everyone who believes, they shall receive. Yes, Stop making excuses. Mm -hmm. Get up and do what must be done. Yes, so that the body of Christ can come into maturity. But when you get rid of your excuses, I stopped by this morning to remind us that your load will be lighter as you walk up the king's highway. I stopped by to remind us this morning that when you get rid of your excuses, yeah, you'll be able to smile instead of frown. When you get rid of your excuses, you'll have joy deep down in your soul. A joy that the world did not give you. And a joy that the world can't take away. When you get rid of your excuses, you'll be able to love your neighbor as much as you loved yourself. When you get rid of your excuses, you'll find a resting place in Jesus. Is there anybody in the house who found a resting place in Jesus? Don't you fool me now. If you came to him weary, worn, and sad, he took you just as you were and slowly but surely is making you just what he wants you to be. When you get rid of your excuses, you'll find a joy that will never be suppressed, a hope that will never be rescinded, a peace that passes all understanding. I want you to know that one day I was not fit to live and I was not ready to die. I got rid of my excuses and I decided to follow Jesus and he has made me glad. I'm going to do a survey this morning. Is there anybody in St. John who the Lord has made glad? If he made you glad, wave your hands. I hear David sing, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord because there's joy in his house. There's love in his house. When you get rid of your excuses, God will bless your life. God will blow your mind. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. So on this first Sunday of 2024, the challenge for us is to get rid of our excuses, take the brakes off, and let God blow your mind. Get rid of your excuses. Oh, I believe in testifying. Is there anybody in the house this morning who knows that you know that you know that when you get rid of your excuses, God will bless your life. God will do what no other power can do. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he will. Yes, he will. He will do it for you. Is there anybody in the house that God did it for? If he did it for you, I dare you to stand on your feet and wave your hands and say, God did it. God did it. And I'm glad Say yeah. yeah! Yeah! Oh yeah! Amen. Let the church say amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. amen for the Holy Ghost. Get rid of your excuses. The doors of the church are open. The gospel was proclaimed. And there's no excuse for anybody under the sound of my voice who has not yet accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of your life not to come give him your life right now. There's not a better time than to start the new year off right than to walk with Jesus Christ. If you don't know Jesus Christ, 
Get up out of your seat. Come down one of these aisles. Give us as elders your hand, but more importantly, give Christ as Savior your heart. If you already have accepted Christ, but you're not living out your Christian witness in the context of a local church, we offer St. John to you today. You are here. There's no excuse for you not to have a church home. And the doors of the church are open to our online worshiping congregation. You may join us by writing to us at St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may call us at 216-431-2560 or email us at St. John AME Church, C-L-E-V at gmail.com. You may accept Christ and join the church by communicating with us. The preacher has preached. The gospel has been proclaimed. The Holy Spirit has spoken. Let us stand to our feet and respond to God's invitation. messenger and thank God that we now go forth with no excuses. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. It is offering time and we want to thank and praise God for all persons who faithfully give of their tithes and offerings to God. It is through your faithful giving, giving that we are in our 194th year of ministry, and we thank and praise God for that. If you're making your check out, thank you. You may do so to St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also give to the Givelify Digital Giving app, St. John AME Church, Cleveland. Let us now give cheerfully and joyfully and thankfully to God who gives to us. Oh, I said the Lord, He blessed me. He blessed me.
given thee. Brother Presley here, but you notice that he is not here because he's tending to a serious family matter, and we want to allow ourselves to have a moment of prayer for not just him, but for Charles Armstrong and for others in our congregation who the new year has gotten off to a rough start, but we know that God is good. So let us just have a brief word of prayer. Let those persons who would be among us today uh, know that our love and prayers are with them and send our prayers to Almighty God as our musicians play softly. Lord, listen to your children pray. Lord, let your spirit Fill this place. Lord, listen to your children pray. Give us love. Give us power. Give us grace. Amen. As we come to the announcement period, I would be remiss if I did not welcome our visitors, uh, our first-time visitors. God bless you and thank you for being here at St. John AME Church. And if you're back with us for the first time in a long time, welcome back to St. John. And that goes for those of us who are watching online. God bless you if this is your first time logging on. We hope that this won't be your last time. And if you have been with us now for the first time in a long time, welcome back and it is good to have you with us. A few brief announcements. Uh, our weekly ministry activities are back in full effect. Bible study is back in session. And of course, we want to thank you for uh, supporting and watching uh, the virtual prayer and meditation on Wednesday. And choir rehearsal is on at 6 o'clock. The St. John Social Action Ministry and GCC Core Team will be meeting on Thursday at 1.30. And you may see uh, Sister Louise McKinney for the link. And our church conference will be next Sunday, immediately after our service, uh, where we will elect the officers and delegates for 2024 and uh, certify our, our trustees. And I will commit, uh, recommend the steward board. I have a hint. All of you who are in office, I want to remain in office. And uh, we thank God and praise God for your work. Let's give our stewards and our trustees a round of applause. Because I can tell you that when we have emergencies such as what we've had this week and throughout the uh, 11 plus years I've been pastor, all I have to do is make one phone call and things get done. And that's because of the officers and the stewards and the trustees here that don't just do the job, but they do it with excellence. And I want to say that publicly and say thank you. Our 2023 tax information is available. Uh, for your uh, contribution statements, uh, please call the church office. I would say that because Charles and Jeffrey are not here, uh, that announcement was published before all things transpired. So give us a week, okay? Give us a week, but they are working on that and we will figure out a way to get that information to you for your taxes. Because as Dr. Brown said, there's two things we don't have excuses for, death and taxes, amen, amen. Utility bill rent payment assistance, call 216-513-6839 if that is applicable to you or someone that you know that we can help in our shoe collection drive. Sister Del Senior Brown is spearheading that. We do have shoes downstairs and we want to thank people for their contribution. We will accept anything but skates. That's roller or ice skates. Anything but skates you can bring in. And as I mentioned before, 988 is just as important as 911. If somebody's suffering alcohol, drug, mental health, please get them the help they need because I can personally attest that there are families and people who are suffering. Let us now stand for our closing song.
benediction will be given by our preacher for the morning, the Reverend Dr. Eric L. Brown. Get rid of your excuses. Yes, now by the grace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be with each of you until we meet, until we meet again. Let us all sing together. being with us today. Have a great rest of the day, a great rest of the week, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, be blessed. Goodbye.